so it's been about a month since Barry ended, and I've been wrestling with how I feel about that last season. For the most part, I think the show successfully pulled off a satisfying conclusion, which is something very hard to do and is not a guarantee for good television, even at a network wrapped up in as much prestige as HBO. It's true, even at the house David Zavlov bought, great shows can burn out in spectacular fashion. Game of Thrones, Barry was not. But I do think it shares one thing in common with HBO's biggest and most maligned hit. Both shows changed dramatically from where they started to where they ended. At the end of the day, Game of Thrones shifted from a fantasy drama focused on political intrigue into more of a fantasy action series that still wanted to pretend it was presenting us with realistic characters, making realistic choices. Barry's change is easier to summarize. The show's genre flipped, almost completely, from dramatic comedy to occasionally comedic drama. It wasn't a quick shift, but when you compare the first few seasons of the show to its final, the differences are night and day. Barry gradually got less funny, and sometimes it even got so dark in subject matter that it became kind of hard to watch. I've never really seen anything like it, and that's why it feels so important to notice, think about, and remember. What was it that made showrunners Bill Hader and Alec Berg decide to make something so unique and rule-breaking? We may never know for sure, but I think there are some obvious hints in the show itself. So let's talk about- Yeah, you know, I've been doing this for three years. and. If there's anything I've learned, it's nobody knows anything except the algorithm. In the mid-2000s, there seemed to be this unspoken rule that most pop culture belonged in boxes. This project is a comedy. This one is a drama. Comedy. Drama. Rarely the two shall meet. During this period, Bill Hader was rocketed to stardom as a performer on Saturday Night Live. Overnight, he became, in the minds of most audiences, that guy who does funny impressions. <laughs> and I did a Seth Rogen impression, and it was like I did a magic trick. Tom Cruise was like, yeah! <laughs> and he pointed at me, and he goes, you do impressions, and you're on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> but even early on, Hater had a knack for taking incredibly dark subject matter and turning it on its head. All that and an old lady on fire. Tonight, on Dateline. At SNL, Hader learned how to sell absurd characters with a straight face, most of the time. His tenure at SNL was electric, and it even earned him his first Emmy nomination. But by the time he left SNL in 2013, comedy was in a weird transition period. The blockbuster comedies Hater starred in throughout the 2000s had largely vanished in the following decade. Those films were being replaced by action movies with quips, and a lot of those happened to be very expensive and successful comic book franchises. With Iron Man and Friends sucking up a lot of the oxygen in the room, movies by directors like Judd Apatow or Ben Stiller stopped hitting theaters as frequently. Comedy movies were, and still are, largely relegated to streaming sites, which often take a more data-driven approach to picking out what to produce, for better or for worse. Fortunately for Hater, TV has also changed a lot in the last few decades. Barry was developed and released more than 10 years into a period known to some as the Golden Age of Television. While you may not be familiar with the term, chances are you've seen at least one of the dozen or so high-budgeted shows that have grabbed a hold of pop culture and redefined what's considered possible in this format. Because of the continued critical and commercial success of prestige television, more and more creatively ambitious projects have been allowed to reach audiences. And these shows were and are a lot less rigid where genre is concerned. Some of my favorite written jokes of all time are in emotionally devastating dramas. Yeah, bitch! Magnets! Oh! And some shows marketed as comedies first have blindsided me with their dramatic character writing. This is your brother's house. I was running it fine without you. Why didn't he leave it to you then? So, are TV genres just pointless? Maybe. 
I think about this question every September when the Emmys happen. Why are shows like The Boys or Succession Outstanding Drama Emmy nominees, while Fleabag and Atlanta compete in the Outstanding Comedy category? And then there's Barry, which has 44 nominations and 9 Emmy wins, all of which have the word comedy somewhere in their title. The show's fourth season will almost certainly pick up another nomination for Best Comedy Show, but that doesn't really feel right. I'd almost go as far to say it feels deceptive. Here's why. I think a lot about someone like my mother trying to pick a show to watch. She's not a huge TV nerd like I am, or like you probably are if you're watching analysis videos on YouTube. Thank you for watching, by the way. Does my dear sweet mother look at this poster from the first season of Barry and notice the gun, or does she notice Bill Hader? Who to her is a star that probably invokes this reaction. You do impressions and you're on Saturday Night Live. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Admittedly, my mother, who doesn't really like violence, probably bails on this show after the opening shot of a murder victim. But maybe she doesn't bail. Maybe she pushes through that first episode because it has Bill Hader in it or even more likely because it has the fawns in it. After the pilot, Barry season one isn't that dark of a season of television, outside of one particularly shocking moment. Most of its violence and introspective moments are sandwiched in between comedic ones, and this blend of drama and comedy keeps things relatively light. Am I evil? Huh? Am I like, am I like, am I like evil? Person. Oh my god. I mean, absolutely. Do I not tell you that enough? And that's how things continued all the way through the first two seasons of the show. There's many more scenes of gangsters talking funny and Hollywood types talking stupid. But starting in season three, and definitely in season four, the show did change. Barry the character lost a lot of his more sympathetic traits as his actions became more and more unhinged, and characters who previously brought a lot of comedy into the series, like Gene or Hank, developed more intense storylines. One thing that never changed, all the way up until the end, was the show's love for lampooning Hollywood. Even as the hitman side of the show became crazier and crazier, Barry would still find time to include scenes that poke fun at many different aspects of the Hollywood machine. These scenes, which often revolved around Sally, are very funny, and made even more so when they allude to or directly reference actual people and productions. On Coda, I worked with committed actors to tell a deeply personal story and now now I'm working with models in Halloween costumes fighting over a blue glowy thing. Infinity Orb. Infinity Orb, yep. <laughs> well that's... <laughs> Don't get me wrong, there are laughs to be found in Barry's back half, but even this aspect of the show feels somehow somber compared to seasons one and two. Most of the Hollywood focused comedy in the first half of the show centered around Gene's acting class and the terrible performances each student would give every few episodes. These scenes were as ridiculous as they are well acted by the show's amazing supporting cast, but these characters largely disappeared in the back half of the show, and the show's comedic attention shifted to more scenes involving directors, producers, and executives. Don't get me wrong, these are great targets for satire, and these scenes are saying a whole lot more than just, isn't it funny to watch bad acting? Hey, Ike, you shitbird. You want a little pie? I mean, it's not not funny. However, these scenes do feel really cynical, so much so that I started wondering if maybe the show's creators were a little bitter about Hollywood and its machinations. For a moment there, I had almost convinced myself that Hader, Berg, and the rest of the staff made the second half of the show much darker as some form of revenge against Hollywood or streaming sites, something like that. And if that were true, who could blame them, given all that was and is still happening over at HBO and their parent company? The Warner Brothers Discovery merger was literally approved two weeks before season three of Barry premiered. Fortunately, someone asked Hader about this aspect of the show directly, which saved me from my own speculation. Take a listen. Do you have contempt for the industry of Hollywood? I feel like sometimes you do, Bill. No, I don't have it. I mean, not much, as much as anybody else, you okay. know. You're very good at satirizing it, though. 
Yeah, but I mean, you, you can't satirize a thing if you don't have some sort of appreciation for it. If you That's just hated true. it, you wouldn't. If you just like just you you couldn't hang out in that space if you really disliked the people. Well. Sh- Now I have to come up with some other reason why seasons 3 and 4 are so dour. How can I possibly explain why characters like Hank and Gene and Barry went from being somewhat silly and fun to watch to becoming the focal points of some really intense plot lines? Bill Hader, why would you make a show like this? What was the point of it all? The emotional honesty is the most important thing. So yeah. As long as it feels it feels emotionally true and it comes from a place, basically, you, you basically try to take something from your life or a feeling you've had in your life, and then you exaggerate it to a place that right. feels uh, entertaining. As I've learned on SNL, you can like something, but it doesn't mean the audience is going to really enjoy it. But the only way I can really do anything is you just try to do it for yourself and what's right for the story. And you know, hopefully people will, will like it. Yeah, this might not be the most satisfying answer, but after watching a ton of interviews, I think it's probably the right one. Hader treated his show with the characters in mind first, not the show's genre, so I should probably do the same. Let's forget for a moment about whether the show stayed funny and instead ask whether it stayed true to each of its characters. Throughout season 4, I remember thinking, often, that a character's actions made sense for their story, but didn't make me happy. I really wanted to see Sally succeed, but I thought she probably never would because of her repressed trauma. Sally was a victim of abuse, multiple times, but she fled from who she was and tried to become a totally different person, instead of engaging with her past actions and trying to do better. She seems to come to terms with some of her issues by the end, so at least there's that. Gene was always a flawed character, even before Barry walked into his life. Seasons 3 and 4 take him to task for his narcissism, which stops him from making the right choices over and over again. When he chooses to pursue his own legacy instead of helping Sally, he unwittingly casts away the only person who can prove his innocence to the police. Fugues and Hank are the only characters who choose to be criminals at the very beginning of the show. Fugues for money and Hank out of some vague desire to be in charge and to prove he can be a capable gangster. These characters were sometimes lovably incompetent, but their actions almost always resulted in other people getting hurt. They both sort of become who they want to be in the end, but it's a hollow victory, and it was one only achieved by constantly sacrificing their own morals, rejecting clear opportunities to get out of the game, and in Hank's case, losing any of his original innocence. Fugues seems to find a strange peace in this hollow existence, while Hank can't reconcile with his choices until they ultimately destroy him. And then once again, we're left with Barry. I think the most important thing to understand about this character is his- <laughs> Creating a season of television requires answering hundreds of questions, and those answers dictate how a show feels. Should we cut to a joke here, or should we play it straight? Can we reflect reality in some way? What if we did away with reality altogether? Can we show what this character's going through in a more interesting way? Can we say something with this intro? What about with this outro? Do our characters deserve redemption? Yes? No? Maybe? TV is changing, has changed, and will continue to do so. Barry brought to the table a lot of new ideas, while also sticking to some great writing fundamentals. I know a lot of people want Bill Hader to go off and make some horror movie next, and he probably has it in him to do so. Hader wouldn't even be the first comedian to jump from sketch comedy to horror and maybe beyond. A lot of comedic talents have shifted towards more serious projects, both in TV and in film. But if I had to guess, whatever Hater makes next probably won't be that easy to pin down. And I'm okay with that. In fact, I'm really excited by it. Even if it doesn't make me laugh.